I am Jim Collison, and this is the Clifton Strikes Podcast Season 2, recorded on December 20th, 2022. In this Clifton Strengths podcast series, we'll look at the Clifton Strengths for Leaders report one theme at a time, and today's theme is analytical. If you're listening live, love to have you join us in chat, or if you have questions after the fact, you can always send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. Dr. Jacqueline Robinson is our host today. She works as a Gallup Learning and Development Consultant and joined me for season one of the Clifton Strengths podcast, where we looked at well-being at work, the book for each theme. And Jacqueline, great to have you on, on this podcast. Welcome back. Thanks. We are spending some time looking at analytical today. Why don't you give us that uh, that all important intro? All right. Well, analytical searches for reasons and causes. Um, they've got the ability to think about all of the factors that might affect a situation. Yeah. Think think about all of them. All. All. Of them. <laughs> all. And all means all <laughs> in this case. Uh, what's the power of this theme in a leadership role? Um, well, a leader with analytical has the capability to look at all, going back to that <laughs> word, all the cards on the table to ensure a thorough review of facts and resources before making decisions. Um, so I think this type of due diligence brings credibility as quarter end goals or long term strategies are discussed with the leadership team or organization. Um, those performance indicators and milestones, it helps everyone know where they're at and, and where they're heading. So I think that's the value that they can bring in a leadership role. I, I think I do. I want to do a parenthetical thought here too, just to Ooh. remind individuals. That's a big word, isn't it? It's the only <laughs> one I know. Um, <laughs> the the thought is we say that word all, but we know Clifton strengths are dynamic in the sense that they're mm-hmm. influenced by other themes, and that the demonstrative effect of all isn't necessarily true. And so you may have high analytical. And you're coming at this and you're like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't. Okay, great. If that doesn't. <laughs> I don't need that, all the cards on the table. <laughs> it, yeah. It's like, no, I need most of them, but I don't need all. Well, yes. That's the beauty of this, right? Is this conversation, this self-awareness, whether you're, yes. you're studying yourself or you're working with a coach along these lines of understanding of what that actually means for you. We mm-hmm. spend some time, we joke about it, but I think it's a good, especially during analytical, it's good to think through that not all of these always have even in our own definitions, they don't always have what they say in what we've said, right? Yes. That you're your own unique you in that. Would you add, Jacqueline, would you add anything to that? Oh, to that you're thought? your own unique you. I like that. Yeah. yeah so d- d- um, going back to that, there might be certain um, facts, figures, numbers, trends, patterns that you appreciate or want to invest in. Um just to make sure that you've looked at it from that particular angle, as opposed to maybe all angles. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know yourself all, best. All may not be appropriate for the situation that, that you're right. in, right? Yeah. I just, I yeah, I just think it's a good thought, especially as we're thinking about analytical. I think it's a good, yes. thought, a good reminder yes. to have in this, right? Is uh, is is that fact? So how could this theme lead others? Let's talk a little bit about that. I think sometimes this is a good me. We thought we think about analytical as mm-hmm. something I do. How does that translate into the we in leading others? Ooh. So I'm coming from a positive approach from this. When I say they can um, take out emotions from a conversation and lean more into facts and logic. And that analytical minded leader can help ground others with their sense of calm coupled with that practical way of looking at that matter or that topic or that subject. And that can help fellow leaders and employees start to work through their crises or their obstacles because they're coming at it from that cool, calm and collect frame of mind versus um, their hair is on fire frame of mind. So I think they're so good at doing that. We've got a manager in the workplace that leads with this and they are just the best at being able to help calm down um, individuals that are just flustered and help them work through that scenario they're going through where you yeah. leave and you go, ah, oh, I feel good about this. I think there's a natural bias to this theme at times that it always takes time. Like, okay, if I'm going to need to think about it, there's mm-hmm. some other themes where this would fit in, but as, 
we think about leading others with it and, and you know, you, you talk about fellow leaders, and employees working through crisis or obstacles. Mm -hmm. Does that does that analysis always have to be bound by some unreasonable amount of time or can that be done quickly as well or in the moment or in the time in, in time where it's happening? I see it done relatively quickly for those that lead with analytical. And if we're just thinking about that analytical theme as a standalone and maybe not those theme dynamics around it, where if they have analytical deliberative, that might look a little different than analytical strategic or yeah. Yeah. analytical in intellection. But um, I think it's something, getting into that practical frame of mind is something that I think they're just naturally adept at to keep people cool, calm and collect. And maybe they just figure it out together. What do we need to learn about this? What what trends are we seeing? Um, what data do we maybe need to grapple with? Or here's the data we have at hand. Let's look at this. So we, I think you're and, right. It doesn't it's not always slow and methodical where they need a lot of time. It just yeah. it's probably situation dependent. I said I'm not watching the chat, but I, I was I was taking a little peek and, and Ralph made a comment and chat about it. It's sorting uh, the comments much larger than that. And you can go back to the video and watch that if you want. But um, I, I, I do love this idea how analytical used as a sort. We spend a bunch of time in mm -hmm. season, I think season five of Theme Thursday, thinking about the sorting of how it can naturally sort. And I think analytical has got that great ability then to 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 think through and sort yes. in that thought process. I think that's where it can really be beneficial in leading others, right? Again, mm -hmm. these themes going from me to we is this idea of how are we using it for the benefit of others in that. Yes. Okay. Let's spend a little bit of time thinking about hinders because that's in the report as well. We spend some time with success. We mm -hmm. spend some time with hinders. Talk a little bit about how this theme could hinder your leadership of others. So this is where leading with the head and not not um, necessarily the heart can hinder relationships in the workplace. Mm -hmm. uh, and that could ultimately hinder performance because in order to achieve those performance outcomes, it's just as important to consider an employee's concerns or feelings and that goes back to that saying, you know, if we feel good, we play good. So I think that's just something that they um, might have to keep in mind. Again, we're, you know, there's there's theme dynamics involved, so this might not be an issue for all. But as a standalone theme, we think about this as more leading with the head than the heart. Um, and then also being able to take risks sometimes without spending time for all the due diligence. Sometimes the organization is required to move fast. And in those instances, it might be more helpful to, you know, um, take all that complexity in your mind, drill it down into simplicity so that you can strike or to lean on a partner that gauges the risk or is already um, thinking about where their future's heading and help, you know, loop them in so they can help you make that decision. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it really kind of plays in, I think a lot of folks, what, what surrounds this has a lot of influence on how it plays out yes. both in speed and longevity and, 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 and personal fulfillment. Yes. What does that mean for me as I'm, is I, cause you know, some of these, like we enjoy doing these processes. That's why we're, we're good at it. We enjoy doing them in analytical from an analytical standpoint. That may be thing that manifests in our brain, but it's satisfied in the outcome of others, right? It's mm -hmm. satisfied when that thought process becomes action is then fulfilled in other people being successful yes. right? in, in that, in that leadership. Any, any other, other, before we look at the other reports and report dynamics, that's not a thing, by the way, I just made that up. Just don't, don't go on, <laughs> don't go on Facebook saying, where's all the report dynamics. We just made, <laughs> Just made that up. Um, uh, uh, any other final thoughts there as, as far as leading others with analytical? Um, well, one thing, I'll actually loop this in. It's not a hindrance. It's it's yeah. a help. But when it comes to leading others, they are really adept at taking something complex and creating simplicity from that. It's one of the value adds of having this theme high. So when, you know, it does seem like, the world is a cobweb and you don't know how you're going to get yourself out of it. Um, that leader can offer a lot of hope and stability in helping them, you know, really just drill down to this is what we need to focus on, or this is most important, or this is what all of this means um, from our standpoint or from our business or from our customer relations. 
you you did what you just did my job, which was great. I'm supposed to be asking that question of how does that fit into our strengths based leadership needs <laughs> needs of those that uh, that we lead and that hope and stability, right? Bringing that in from a needs of followers um, mm-hmm. uh, concept to bringing it, you know, bringing that piece together and providing that stability. Mm-hmm. I think it does. I think it it can be a very stabilizing force. Mm-hmm. And hey, you know, I've thought through this. Here's here's some things to consider in the process because I thought through it. You know, that's always that. Yeah. Hey, I've got this problem, and that person goes, um, "Yeah, I got nothing." <laughs> like, <you> know? yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and then that even lends itself to that compassion piece because they care about how these folks are feeling, and they want to yeah. make sure that they feel grounded and stable and positive about the future. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right on. Well, let's do a little report dynamics. Again, not a real thing. Let's and we don't do have a list it. of them. But let's think about <laughs> uh the Clifton Strengths for leaders and uh a Clifton Strengths for man or for a sales report. What what could those look like together? Yes. Yeah, so because of this leader's ability to really understand and appreciate facts and figures uh or trends, they can be really skilled at helping prospects and clients understand how working with the company will serve as a good return on investment mm. for them and their their overhead. Yeah. Good ROI. Which yes. Is, right. Really just how do we know we did this right? Like that's yes. what that, you know, that's too long of an acronym. How do we know we got this right is longer than ROI, but it, I think it does, it can be helpful in that space. I, I love, again, yeah. I love to see those two reports to think about from both a, from a sales perspective and from a leader perspective that future casting. We're at the end of the year. Of course, a lot yes. of companies spend a lot of time thinking about, you know, hey, what's the next year going to be? I think there could be some helpful um, some helpful insights in both right now and then throughout the year. How do we mm-hmm. continually measure this success in a way or think through all the options that are available? What about what about the manager report? Clifton Strengths for manager reports we think about in the context of this leader report. This even goes to um, forecasting or uh, future forecasting, as you said, they can help internal team members understand performance objectives, where their current performance metrics sit um, for both themselves and the the team overall, and then what's needed to hit that target goal. So whether they've got team members that are, you know, really trying to close on goal with quarter four right now, Q4, or whether they're already looking ahead and putting some some future goals in place. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're really good at creating that level of clarity to help team members know where they're at, where they're heading, so that they've got that sense of stability. Yeah. I, th- I think teams really need, this is going to sound weird, but I think teams really need this from a stability standpoint. This, yes. This process of thought, both from a day-to-day, today standpoint, and what this could look like in the future. And how yeah. those two tie together, I think sometimes we miss that. Like, yeah, we have visions for the future. How are we actually going to get there? Yes. Like, <laughs> and then putting a path in place. But who's actually going to manage us through that path? You know, we have a we have a gigantic, as we're recording this, we have a gigantic um, uh, financial system changeover that's happening here at Gallup, you know, at the end of the year. And, um, and it's been it's been fun to watch the teams that are preparing us for this. And up to two months ago, we were getting, okay, here it comes, it's coming. And then, okay, here's some things you need to know. And just, just know that, you know, coming in January, you need to do this. And I'm sure as we get into January, they will be like, okay, don't forget, right. That's the, I think that's the management side of that change. The leadership side of that was knowing we needed to make, you know, we had to upgrade, do some things for the future leading that from uh, where we go and what we do, what, mm-hmm. what's the, what's the ultimate end goal takes advantage of that futuristic side of things, right. Or futuristic with a small F, sorry, using analytical, yeah. right. To yes. really think through, cause it's very complicated. What we're about to do is super complicated and it has to work. It, you can't, well, oh, well, oops. Like we, we can't have our financial system. Maybe next like, time. Oops, oops, yeah. <laughs> We didn't think about that, right? Type deal. So I think that's that nice manager yes. leader combo, right? Thinking about that. Any other any other thoughts on uh, analytical as we wrap this up? Um, they're good with the why too. So as as the organization might be moving in the direction, whether it's you know um, 
this financial piece, whether it's new goals, they're really good with, um, because they're curious about the why, why might we be moving in that direction? Have we thought it through and looked at different angles? That, that ability to deliver that to their team is, it, it's, it's so clear. It's so adept. They're so good at doing that. Yeah. So I appreciate those with analytical because it's not just here's the metrics or the numbers or the outcomes, but here's why. Um, and people appreciate the why behind love it. Love that. Love yeah. that. Love the love the why on it. Yes. Um, it's an it's a no brainer, but sometimes we forget, you know. Mm-hmm. And people people need. I I I have another podcast friend, and he always says, "Yeah, it, adults need a why for some reason. We think only the kids ask it. The adults, we feel bad, so we don't ask it. But we yeah, are we're still inside. the two year olds. <laughs> we still need a why sometimes. Like, yes. why are we doing all? The, oh it could have that kind of future impact for me. Yes. Oh, it'll allow me to put my timesheet in on my phone. <laughs> okay. I'm in <laughs> like, I am yeah. all in on this thing. Right. So uh, super yes. good stuff, Jacqueline. Thanks for, thanks for your thoughts on that uh, as well. We'll remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources we do have available. If you head on to Gallup access, so go to gallup.com slash Clifton strengths, log in and uh, choose the menu upper left-hand corner, drop that down and choose resources put in the theme any theme this one was analytical but put in any theme all the resources all the webcasts everything we've ever said not everything because it's we didn't yeah it's impossible but most things that we said are available out there for you and you can find them right there stay up to date with all our webcasts by following us create an account follow us on eventbrite gallup.eventbrite to b-r-i-t-e on that by the way gallup.eventbrite.com join us on any social platform by searching clifton strengths and we want to thank you for listening today if you enjoyed it Share it. Hit the like and subscribe button. We're there. We had a whole bunch of you today. You should hit that yes. like button for the live folks. If you're watching on the recorded version, click, you can still click it. It's always nice. We like a little bit of encouragement. Click, little the, boop. click the like button. <laughs> yeah, it makes us feel good. And, of course, we want to thank you for listening today. If you are listening live, stay around for a smidgen of post show. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody. <laughs>